What you're about to see, my wife and I accomplished in five and a half hours. Using mostly materials we found, we are able to scrap this little shelter together. That shovel we found, the chair we didn't. We were going to get rid of the chair anyway. Those walls were fun, just sharpened one end of the stick. Got three of them holding it together so it doesn't go anywhere, hopefully. Time will tell, I guess. I uh, found somebody's old collapsed tent that I'm using as a, a wind slash rain protection for the back of the lean-to. Um, pallet. I was lucky to find that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Got a spare tire over here. Don't know what I'm going to do with that. Luggage carrier and pot. Jug of water right there. So if anybody ever comes over to use our, uh, our fire pit, uh, they can put it out safely. Uh, we actually found that that uh, cook stove thing there, that grill. My wife found it exploring. Very good find. Um, this is fastened together using paracord, maybe too much, maybe not, maybe I'm not sure, a little experience. And of course we ran out of paracord, so I used root. Seems to be doing okay. I mean, just to keep it from sliding around on the support here. Not actually holding too much weight itself. Uh, this wall's constructed the same way. It's a little bit shorter. That one goes to my uh, a little over my knee. That one's uh, almost to my waist. And I can probably add another log on there. The sticks are tall enough. Uh, a little fire uh, storage here. Got a couple sticks keeping them off the ground a little bit anyway. Uh, keeping them dry. Hope when I scouted this location. I thought we're probably, oh, 10 feet above the water level, so uh, any kind of flooding in the spring isn't going to be a problem. That. That's my, uh, that's my spot right there. It survived the winter and I thought, oh good, you know, there's, nothing can tear this thing down, you know. Water's not going to get this high, but oh my god how high it got it's it's almost level with where I'm standing right now and uh, I'm probably a foot above where uh, above the ground level where the spot is at the campsites at but it's even deeper out in the middle so I know in the summer the water will, when it rains the water level will get really high in the summer but I didn't think it would get like this. And really once the water is received, this is about all we're probably gonna get in a year for flooding. So as far as locations, available resources on site, it's really like a once a year reassembly type of deal here. So I think I'm gonna stay with this spot for now. Later this year, I do wanna get a new spot, but not completely relocate, more like uh, have two separate locations. What I didn't know last year is that this whole area floods when the snow upstream melts in the spring and it's going to do that every year. But this spot is within walking distance from my house and any area that's walked as infrequently as this place is by pedestrians would be an hour away. So um, drive an hour every day to make this film or uh, seasonal rebuild. Guess I'm stuck with this spot. What it looks like is that the water must have washed away my main support there. But my goals for this year are not only to have it built, but to have a garden, water filtration system, and a second location somewhere that's not going to flood, that I can do a winter video. Because this area you have to climb down rocks, and in the winter it's just too much snow and ice, too much danger to make that kind of a video. So this stick here is what I'm going to use for the main support that washed away in the flood last year. Now, if I dig a hole deep enough and I bury the thickest end first so to slow the rot down, I sh it should keep from uh, washing away in the floods next year. Now, I think a decent height for any long-term shelter would be about this tall. Now, that's about your height and a half. So, that's how tall I'm going to make this stick. It's going to be buried in the ground, part of it's going to be sticking out above the shelter, it's going to be a little shorter. I'm not building a house here, but 
it's going to give me plenty of room to move around in uh, and mainly just to store things. Uh, dried wood, uh, maybe remnants of MREs that I want to leave over here. Like the last time I built this, my wife was helping me every step of the way. She cleared off all the dead sticks and leaves from the tarp so that I can pull the tarps up, rearrange the supports, check and see if they're rotted, and replace them if necessary. I'm just digging the hole for the main support with my dirt ladle. I think that's deep enough. Um, my old my old support was taller, so I think I'm gonna use that instead of the new one. I'll use the new one for something else, though, don't worry. I'm sharpening the end of this support so that when I slam it into the ground, it'll go deeper than I dug. Every little bit counts. Because this shelter is going to last a lot longer than the work I'm putting into it. Charcoal from last year. building a shelter, you want to make sure the main support isn't going to fall and kill you in your sleep or you're not building a shelter, you're building a death trap. So, Before I conclude, I want to talk about the five W's of uh, campsite selection. Um, that's water, for reasons that are now obvious to us wood, uh, either for burning or for building, wind, and that's general exposure, like if you're out in the middle of a field and the sun's going to be baking down on you, that's probably a bad spot. Widowmakers, that's anything like this that isn't tied up properly or is hanging from a tree that's ready to fall and you're going to be under it. And wildlife, that's uh, rabid raccoon, uh, skunks, bears. Uh, any kind of predator, poisonous snakes, spiders, or scorpions. Those are all things you want to be aware of when you're setting up your campsite. Next time, weather permitting, we're going to be setting up the diagonal beams. I hope you like this episode. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified of any upcoming videos. If you like this episode, 
give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment as well. And tune in next time for How to Survive.